I'm Kate and I was born prematurely, so was my twin sister. I was born at 28 weeks and two days, which is a pro a about 11 weeks too early. How I became blind was um, due to being premature, we were both put on oxygen. My sister's oxygen levels were checked, but mine weren't, and they upped mine when they didn't need to, so they damaged my eyesight. I work for Southampton Sight, local sight loss charity in Southampton. I'm the access technology coordinator. My role is quite varied now. I teach people how to use technology such as how to use smartphones, computer or a laptop or tablet so they have their independence with technology. I'm Kevin and I'm at the Southampton site for the blind. I've learnt quite a lot of how to handle myself in this position. Well life before I lost my sight I was a taxi driver uh, working at Southampton Airport in the taxi business, you sometimes have long periods when you're not doing anything. And this is one of those times. And I happened to just lean on the windowsill with my cheek in my hand, like so. And I closed my eye, and one of my eyes that was in my cheek, and I, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't see anything for a moment. I thought, it's a bit odd. So I took my hand away again, and I could see it. So I held my hand up, put it over my eye, suddenly discovered I couldn't see. When my sister was old enough to drive a car, she chose not to, she chose not to have driving lessons. I remember feeling angry and upset because to me it was a wasted opportunity. You've got sight, why not learn to drive? I'd lost my job instantly because in um, driving public transport, you must have two operating eyes. But I, the first thing I thought about, well, I can't drive a car, for instance. It's the first thing you think of. And it just takes you, I thought, ah, oh, I'll get the bike out. I'll go and I'll use the bike, that'd be all right. And then it's, you know, a second later, it re you realize you can't do that. And then, and then, yeah. I was given the opportunity through my work to go sailing for a day and that really kind of gave me the freedom to sort of do things like climb up the mast and pull on ropes and just get around and even steer the ship. You, you can't really understand the freedom that gives you really and I'm, I'm not allowed to drive a car but I can drive a boat. But that independence, that glimmer of what they used to be able to do just can change someone's life. When I was sitting on that couch, that's exactly how I felt, but I didn't even know how to give up. I didn't know. that if I thought to myself, well, God, if I don't do something, anything, really, I'm going to, it'll be even worse. You've either got the determination or you haven't, disability or no disability. If you've got that attitude that actually says, I'm going to go and find something to do, I am going to do it and I will achieve it, then with or without a disability, that's your personality. I'm into uh, radio control models, uh, mainly ships and trains. The train's my main interest. I started getting the sound guys together and fitting sound to all my models and now I know where they are. And that's how I got over it. And that was a great help once. Once I got control back for some of the things that I used to do, it became a lot easier to cope with. Because of my disability, I've actually probably had more opportunities and more chances to be the daredevil person that I am. Your life isn't over, it's just changing and you can adapt and still have your independence.